Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Oyer, emergency physician and founder of edexitvideo.com, a website that provides free patient medical education about different emergency room-related diagnoses. In this video, we're going to talk about salivary gland infections. Salivary gland infections are viral or bacterial infections of the saliva-producing glands. There are three pairs of major salivary glands. The two largest are the parotid glands. One over each cheek over the angle of the mandible in front of the ear. Inflammation of one or two glands is termed parotitis. Two submandibular glands are at the back of the mouth on both the lower side of the jaw. And two sublingual glands are under the floor of the mouth. All the salivary glands empty saliva into the mouth through ducts that open at various locations inside the mouth. Salivary gland infections are common and they can recur in some people. Viral infections such as mumps can affect the salivary glands. Mumps infection most often results in parotitis. Mumps is a rare infection today because of immunization with the MMR vaccine. Bacterial infection usually results from a blockage, such as a salivary gland stone or poor oral hygiene. These stones obstruct the normal flow of fluids and can become infected when bacteria already present in your mouth have a chance to grow in a fluid-filled space. Salivary stones are more common to occur when people are dehydrated or in the hospital. Some of the symptoms are abnormal or even foul taste. Decrease ability to open the mouth secondary to pain. Dry mouth. Fever. Mouth of fa or facial pain. Swelling while eating. Redness or swelling of the face or side of the face. Characteristically, when a patient has parotitis, it is difficult to tell the angle of the jaw because of the swelling. Signs and tests. An examination by a healthcare provider or dentist will show that salivary glands are enlarged, possibly painful, especially if there is bacterial infection. A CT scan or ultrasound may be done if the physician suspects an abscess, which is a focal infection. Treatment. In most cases, no specific treatment is needed. If there is pus, fever, systemic symptoms, or bacterial infection is suspected, then antibiotics are prescribed. If an abscess is present, then surgery or a drainage procedure will be required. Practice good oral hygiene. Brush your teeth and floss at least twice daily will help with healing and prevention of the spreading of infection. That is, if the infection was caused by poor oral hygiene or dental infection. Warm saline gargles, half a teaspoon of salt in one warm cup of water, will help by keeping the mouth moist. Drink lots of water and suck on sugar-free lemon sour candy to induce the salivary glands to secrete more saliva and therefore flush the infection out. Massaging the swollen, tender area with a warm cloth may be helpful. Complications are not really common but may occur. Some are abscesses of the salivary gland, extension of the infection, or recurrence of infection. When the infection extends into the floor of the mouth, it can become Ludwig's angina. Prevention. Have good oral hygiene. In many cases, salivary glands infection cannot be prevented, especially if they're viral. But a good oral hygiene may prevent some cases of the bacterial kind of infection. Return to the emergency department if you are diagnosed with salivary gland infection and symptoms are getting worse, especially if fever develops or recurs. If there is increasing pain not resolved by over-the-counter medications, if you have chills, general malaise, or your overall condition is worsening after the initial evaluation. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. Always follow up with your primary care provider to make sure the underlying conditions are ruled out and appropriately treated. For other videos like this video, please go to www.edexitvideo.com, but remember these are educational videos and should never replace the care or attention of a medical healthcare professional.